ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Wednesday. Win or go home. That's how the first round of play in the BAISS playoffs was set up. The sudden death matches meant that it was anyone's game once you stepped between the white lines. Up first were the pennant winners and the fourth place finishers in the various divisions. Our Jonathan Benson has the call. Let's start with the junior boys, the fourth place Queens College Comets starting off fast against the pennant winning NCAA Crusaders. The Comets played nine runs in the first inning and the Crusaders are forced to play catch up. In the bottom of the frame, Crusaders, they get three runs on the board and they start chipping away. However, the Comets, they would hold their nerve. They go on to upset NCA 10-7 to move into the championship. First innings was good for us, not very good for their pitcher. But I was just saying to Becky just now, I mean, it wasn't all... He walked about four or five of our guys, all right, okay, but they weren't... We had about three walked runs in, but we also hit him as well, and that's important as well. So we put guys on base through the bat as well. So I'm really pleased with the boys today. They did a fantastic job. They came here. I mean, they, we were fourth. They were first. They were pennant winners. They hadn't lost a game. We lost three. So, you know, we improved as we went along. So I'm really pleased, very pleased for these guys. They've done a good job. What kind of momentum does this give you now as you head into the championship next week? <laughs> I have never, never even thought about it. I'll, I'll think about that just before the championship game. Same two teams playing on the junior girls' side. QC looking to pull the upset once again. But this time around, the Crusaders, they don't give in. NCA wins 11-5 to advance to the championship. My girls were a bit nervous in the first two innings, but they settled in and we got the victory. I think we wanted it more. We lost to QC in the regular season and we came back with a purpose to win this game today. We think we're the better team and it showed today. What do you do now as you head into the championship? First of all, we need to go back to the drawing board, work on a few things and get ready for whoever we play. In senior girls play, Sack showing why they are the pennant winners. They shut out the four-seeded Charles W. Saunders Cougars 10-0 in just three innings to advance to the championship. Our bat started off slow, but um, they started connecting the um, bottom of the second. What's the plan now going into the championship? Um, to execute and also to practice what we did and just to step it up. Could anybody challenge you? Well, you know, there's always a challenge because, you know, everybody wants to step up their game when it comes to sack. So as they step theirs up, I uh, saw us. A pitcher's duel early on in senior boys play between the pennant winning Crusaders and the Jordan Prince William Falcons. It was one strikeout after another. In the middle innings, both pitchers starting to get tired and some runs finally getting on the board. Down one in the bottom of the sixth, NCA bringing three runs home to go up by two. And in the top of the seventh, the Crusaders' defense would hold. NCA wins 10-8 to eight and move into the championship. Some people forget that we play seven innings and not two innings. Because I must say, Princeville came firing out the gate. And they had a little bit of concern because Michael was throwing the ball pretty hard. But then we decided to just dig in and play a patient game. The game will come to us, and as you can see, it did come to us, and we pulled through because my boys are physically fit, and they, they trained very hard for the last two weeks. What's the game plan now heading into the championship? Do you want a faster start than you had tonight? Yes, we got to bring, bring the bat on the ball next time. So we're going to work on that in practice and come good for the championship to start next week. The final set of sudden death playoff games were played earlier today. Jonathan Benson, ZNS Total Sports. Thanks so much, Jonathan. The decision made by members of the Bahamas Softball Federation Executive Board not allowing certain players to compete at the recently held National Softball Round Robin Championships might just come back to hurt the country on the national level. I wear this country in my heart, you know, and the country didn't make this decision. You know, a, a, a certain a few individuals made this decision, and that is something that I have to really sleep on before I can make the, uh, the, the, the definitive uh, um, a result but be it as it may how I feel now I think if the national game was to travel tomorrow I think I wouldn't be a part of it because like I say mentally I am torn apart now that he is within reach of a world title the Bahamian middleweight boxer Toriano Johnson is no longer into the talks he wants to lace up his gloves and throw some punches at the boxer who holds the crown Johnson sat down with our Charles Fisher and told him that it's time to rumble after taking down Iman O'Kane, Torino Johnson has his eyes and fists set on one fighter. 
Gennady Golovkin, better known as Triple G, who's perhaps the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world at this time. Uh, we are in negotiations uh, with this very same opponent you had just mentioned, Triple G. Hopefully that fight, which I am the mandatory for since the Iman O'Kane fight, I'm the number one contender for the IBF with Triple G holds. So we'll be looking forward for a big match very soon, hopefully in February. Triple G somewhat looking past Toriano, not wanting that fight just yet. It's not just him who's avoiding me. So are uh, many other fighters, but that's understandable. You know, uh, as, it, as it stands now, now I am turning heads. And uh, before I wasn't doing so much, so marketing was one of the biggest issues. But also, it's a to fight me would be a high risk and a very low reward. In the in the event, meaning that Toriano is most likely to beat you, and um, your retirement pay is not going to be so great. Fighting under Golden Boy Promotions, headed by former world champion Oscar De La Hoya, his next fight definitely will be on foreign ground. A fight on home soil, a possibility. That is something I anticipate in the very near future. This is something that I want greatly. This is a passion for me to actually fight home among my very own Bahamian people, the people them who had raised me to the point where I am today. Of course, I couldn't make it by myself. So definitely, I would like to prove to the Bahamian people, to, to showcase to the Bahamian people what they had helped to produce out of this very small country. A very animated fighter inside and outside the ring. He's happy to be carrying the Bahamian flag at this time. Boxing has been one of the sports in the Bahamas that has not been so dominant as far as getting the recognition that it solely deserves. And so uh, now stepping foot onto the international platform, you know, it, it's, it's a moment when you can see your aqua gold and black just risen out there. It gives you a sense of pride and will when you go into the ring. So definitely, you know, I am, it's a glorious moment when I see those flags ra raised when I'm in the ring. Announcement on his next fight expected by the end of this year. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. Thanks so much, Charles. The two important A's in a student athlete's life are academics and athletics. With this in mind, head coach Kevin Johnson is making sure that his players strike a balance on and off the court. We heading to Freeport in a few weeks to the Tabernacle uh, Baptist uh, Thanksgiving Classic, and after that we come back. Uh, in a few weeks we're going to take exam, and, and hopefully these guys will do well. Most of them. They have to make a 2.5 and above. 2.5 and above. That's my, uh, you know, projective GPA for them. And they're doing well right now. They're in study hall. You don't see none of them around. Now. They're in study hall right now. I have two uh, wonderful teachers that are helping them with their homework and making sure they're getting their work done. Um, after that, after exams, we travel to Las Vegas to play in the Tarkinian Classic, and that that is very uh, that is very high class in terms of the level of basketball. So hopefully uh, these guys, the seniors will be seen and, and a lot of Division One and Division Two, and you know, junior college coaches are going to be there. So, you know, hopefully they'll be seen and, and get an opportunity to go to school. Well, that's all the time we have for sports. Stay tuned. There's more to come. This is ZNS Total Sports. Brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.